and hello welcome to this video so in the last video we actually talked about recycle loops and uh, yeah I was talking about uh, how uh, at least for for pressure we were able to stabilize the iterative algorithms of the recycle loop which we explained in the last video we were able to uh, help it to stabilize by specifying some 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 form of outlet pressure over here so no matter what pressure is given into this terminal pump the outlet pressure will be um, 130,000 pascals now um, we would also uh, it will also be good to do something similar for uh, yeah. okay it will also be good to do something similar for temperature as well because as we see here the energy flows in in terms of uh, uh, work done is actually 0 0.00 Zero zero three kilowatts about, and then the the energy flows out here are about zero point zero zero two kilowatts or two five. <coughs> so um, there is a problem if we apply the first law of thermodynamics. We know that there's a if we, if this thing keeps going on, there's going to be accumulation of energy in the system, and the terminal will actually uh, increase in temperature by a lot. So um, yeah, the the, the thing is you want to do to get some convergence at least is to either reduce the tolerance of the uh, temperature so that uh, eventually we hope to get a, a constant uh, temperature system where the pipe is losing uh, as much uh, energy as the as this uh, <coughs> as this uh, energy input over here so <coughs> to help us mitigate this uh, instead of guessing yeah, instead of guessing the, the temperature, right? Instead of guessing the, the, the temperature where this terminal outlet pipe is going to uh, release that much heat, we're going to in use this opportunity to introduce heaters and coolers, as well as heat exchangers if you have the time. But heaters and coolers are basically, well, very similar in the sense that uh, uh, one, they remove or add heat to the system and it's just uh, whether you're adding negative heat or positive heat. So a heater, if it adds negative heat to the system, then it effectively uh, functions as a cooler, right? So, so in terms of the program, they are quite similar. Of course, in terms of function, they are complete opposites. One, one adds heat to the system, one takes heat away. But in terms of program, it's a simple matter of uh, changing the signs, okay? So do you, uh, do you add uh, negative heat to the system or do you add positive heat to the system? So yeah, so what we can do here, usually what I like to do first is to remove this recycle loop because uh, it will help to speed up the calculations. All right, so uh, normally what happens, right? Uh, if we have a, a system of heating and cooling, maybe we will have uh, uh, this stream going into the heater first. Okay, so MSTR O3 will connect to the heater. Of course, I can do some inversion. Okay, invert horizontally so that it looks nicer. So the cooler, I can put it later. The outlet stream, I can make a new outlet stream here. Okay, and this thing, I can invert it horizontally. And of course, I can put an energy stream in as well into the heater. And how do I... Uh, so these are the basic things you need to uh, define so that your heater thing actually works. All right. So how do you, uh, how do you, uh, uh, what, what do you call that? How do you uh, define heat added or removed? Well, uh, there are a few things here. You can define a fixed heat added or removed so that you you change the heating or cooling uh, power over here. You can also uh, put some efficiency here because there's bound in a real heating system there's bound to be some heat loss to the environment maybe not uh, 10 percent maybe two percent of the heat okay depends so there are a few things you can do here uh, one is the heat added or removed one is the temperature change so if the temperature before is 5 degree uh, 25 you want the you you and you want to add like maybe 5 degrees c you can do that Outlet temperature, uh, you, we can we can fix the outlet temperature so that it's a constant value. Okay, uh, 
you can uh, adjust the outlet vapor mode fraction so this is more for like you know phase change uh, phase change or uh, <coughs> excuse me phase change situations where you kind of have a mixture of uh, of uh, two or more components and then you want to set a, a, a vapor mode fraction of something okay so this thing I won't be going into here because this is a sort of a single fluid system and we don't even deal with phase change the last one is to deal with energy so uh, for if you if you select energy stream well you are able to uh, uh, see how much heat is being done here maybe you want to put uh, 8 kilowatts okay you want to do 8 kilowatts or maybe 16 or 25 for that matter all right so that you will hit the the terminal to this temperature really up to you so there are many modes you can do it okay so uh, you can uh, you can change the the properties here one thing to note the, is that the pressure drop of this heater is kind of fixed you have to enter some sort of uh, sort of a pascals how many pascals uh, of pressure drop you expect in this heater could be 50 could be 60 really uh, up to you maybe 5000 for the matter those are just some examples now the thing is this uh, uh, the moment the moment you do this uh, <coughs> well you you take away the opportunity for us to include like no more uh, uh, how do you say if your heater actually has some model where you use a, a correlation to calculate pressure drop okay you you then will not be able to uh, plug in the calculation here okay you will need something a little bit more complex okay but we, we will not go to into that this uh, at this time so I'm just going to talk about the, the, the brief basics of heaters and coolers. Now cooler is the same thing. You can also uh, uh, get an inlet stream, MSTR04 in this case. And then I can uh, invert it horizontally. Okay, I can make a new stream here. Which I also will, which we will call MSTR05. Okay, which will invert horizontally. Okay. Uh, of course between the heater and cooler if you want things to be physically real you can add another pipe here so that yeah that, that should make sense between the heater and cooler there should be a pipe all right because you don't want your heating and cooling to be in the same place right so you definitely want a pipe there okay uh, but for the sake of this video I'm not going to do very much of that so for the energy stream you can just uh, you see uh, for this case, there is some uh, energy flow out of the system. Okay, so for the cooler, okay, what I like to do over here is to define the outlet temperature. Okay, so that just like for this terminal pump where we define the outlet pressure, okay, it makes the convergence of the recycle loop much easier. Okay, so that is, that is a tool that we need to do for pressure. Okay, for temperature, we also need to do the same thing so that, you know, uh, when the recycle loop converges, it's a it's like a physical system, right? So <clears throat> whatever whatever heat we add in through the heater, it will be eventually lost through a cooler somewhere else, right? <clears throat> we can even add heat exchangers here, but uh, that's that's another topic for another time. All right, so that's that's uh that's for cooler. And what I want to do is to define the outlet temperature. Maybe I'll do it at uh, maybe 43 degrees C, right? 43 degrees C. So that no matter what happens, the outlet temperature will be always fixed at 43 degrees C. <coughs> and then once once you're once you're done with this, of course you can of course uh set some sort of pressure drop, maybe another five kilopascals. I don't know. Uh, how much is that? Uh yeah, it's really up to you to decide. Um, but yeah, that that's uh, that's yeah, that's again up to you to decide. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, how much pressure drop to have? Yeah, you can even you can even uh put in a a valve or something here to simulate uh some sort of a pressure drop as well. Yeah, you can uh you can use a valve or you can use a pipe if you want to have some different kind of pressure drop model. Of but of course. The, the best thing that's already available here is to use the heat exchanger heat exchanger but that's another that's for another video 
So do very basic things first. Okay, so heaters and coolers are, are great, especially if you want to simulate maybe an electrical heater or something, which is not uh, heated by fire or hot gas or anything like that. Uh, a heater model is perfect for, let's say, electrical heater. So because, because the control is very precise. Okay, so uh, now, now uh, what we do, since this uh, terminal is like 43 degrees C, we are able to close the recycle loop. Okay, so what, what do we have here? We have, uh, I mean for, for, each, uh, for, each, uh, for each property, for example pressure, temperature, and of course your uh, flow rate, there should be a fixed point. What do I mean a fixed point? For example, uh, uh, pressure, there should be, your, your pressure here is uh, fixed to 130,000 pascals no matter what happens before. So this, the, the pressure of this uh, stream here will be fixed at, at this, uh, at this uh, stream. So this, uh, this counts as one so-called fixed point for pressure. It makes the, re uh, the recycle loop uh, converge better. Likewise, for temperature, the fixed point uh, for in the, in the case of this loop will be over here where, where this cooler always sets the temperature of the outlet at 43 degrees C <coughs> so that however the, the, the stream actually changes before uh, at MSTR04 your outlet uh, temperature will always be 43 it makes, the, it makes the loop converge very easily or at least the recycle block converge very easily Alright, so MSTR05, I can connect it to the terminal stream inlet and of course things should converge well. One last thing, of course, technically your, your mass flow rate should also have a fixed point but because the mass flow rate is the same throughout every, every point of the loop, you don't really need to uh, find, uh, find something to actually uh, uh, put in mass or take out mass from this system. Okay, so uh, it means that uh, if I'm adding mass to this system, uh, I should be also be taking out mass out of this system. Um, and then uh, if you use though, if we have it in those situations, we will have stream mixers and stream splitters. Then we should also use a similar strategy such that we fix uh, the outlet mass flow rate in that system, at that point. Just like how we fix the outlet temperature at the cooler O1, how we fix the outlet pressure at the terminal pump and this will help the recycle loop uh, converge better okay so uh, okay I hope I hope that clarifies things for you in terms of how to deal with uh, recycle loops okay so let's look for a recycle uh, we will just put a recycle logical block here and uh, we will put the inlet stream to be MSTR05 and the outlet stream will be uh, terminal stream inlet of course it's good to uh okay I should save this as uh, I should save this as a uh, YouTube demo 4 heater and cooler okay so this is YouTube demo for. I should have said it at the beginning of this video, but never mind. All right. So uh, if everything goes well, this recycle stream should converge pretty quickly. Even though the conditions at MSTR05 are quite far from the conditions at the terminal stream inlet. So uh, let's let's do the recycle. Let's do it. Solve the flow sheet. And you can see that uh, in about uh, two loops, as you can see, two loops, 0 0.6661 seconds. So it's about 0 0.7 seconds. This whole loop has uh, converged. You can see the, the steady state uh, temperature and pressures have uh, converged pretty quickly. Okay, uh, why is that so? Remember, we, we actually set a fixed point here. Okay, we actually set a fixed point here. As long as we have a singular fixed point uh, for that property throughout the whole loop, it will make the convergence a lot easier. <coughs> and you take a look here at the energy in it's 25 kilowatts here energy out here is 24.992 uh, of course this uh, it of course if you take a look uh, at the, strictly at the energy balances here it may or may not uh, be so-called physical 
okay you have to go and sum it up and see whether there are any errors but we know at least for for the pressure drop uh, uh, at least for for in the in the sense of heat addition and uh, removal this system is more or less it makes physical sense because uh, whatever heat you put in is whatever heat should go out at a steady state and whatever and work done you put in should be whatever also contribute to whatever work the uh, heat that is being lost to the environment so uh, having these fixed points actually uh, makes the it makes the uh, how do you say it makes the uh, convergence of this uh, stream work a lot better all right you may even use uh, yeah. you you can even use coolers and heaters or even these pumps to artificially uh, make your okay never mind forget it I, I maybe I'll talk about that concept in another video maybe, maybe it's too many concepts for one video but okay I, I hope this has a uh, uh, shown you a little bit more about heaters and coolers they're very simple at least in comparison to thinking about recycle loops or recycle blocks so uh, yeah I think that's it for today I will see you in the next video thank you very much